Hey everybody and welcome to the first lesson of my five lessons to five practice hacks to become a violin superhuman. Well, I think all of you that are here are already superhumans because you took the time to come and practice with me tonight. So actually that deserves a virtual high five to the screen. Just imagine I'm uh, giving you a high five. It's amazing that you're here today with us to practice. I mean, you could have been watching cat videos, right? But you decided to come here to this channel to practice instead. So I'm so proud of you. So right now I'm going to have a look in the chat and I'm going to see who is all there today to see who I'm talking to. So wait a second, I'm just trying to figure out how to see my live chat. I Hmm, how is this working? Oh yes, okay. I should be seeing the chat now. So let me know in the comments where you are from, from which country you are joining this lesson today. Hmm. Still trying to look for the chat. <laughs> Bear with me, everybody. I, I will find the chat, don't worry. Um, oh, I can see there's, oh, there's, wow, that's amazing. I see that there's 20, 55 of you watching today. And now I also found a chat. So I can actually see what you are writing to me. Wow, amazing. So many of you are there today. So I see greetings from Poland, from Kenya, from Canada. I see somebody from India, Saudi Arabia, Katarina from Croatia, Ripolo from England. Hey, you're back again. I know you were there two days ago. So Rob from Amsterdam. I'm actually also from the Netherlands. So that's great to have some Dutch people among us as well. I see Maruto from Croatia, Rick from England. I see Lord Gaben of Argentina. Wow, that's amazing. So many people from all over the world taking the time to practice violin today. That's amazing. So happy to see everybody. So today, I promise I will reveal the first of our five secret hacks to become um, a violin superhuman. Well, of course, all of these hacks are all strategies that have been known for decades and violin players have been using them forever but still it is so useful to revise some of the most important practice principles because i noticed personally as a teacher that so many people are not not putting these hacks into um practice they are not doing these hacks and just by implementing five of these simple hacks of which i'm going to share one today if you are going to implement this into your practice, you will be already better than 95% of people that play the violin because 95% of people that actually learn, maybe they know it, maybe they don't know it, but they don't really put this into practice. And that makes them progress slower and practice less efficiently. So I'm so happy that you do take the time to think about these hacks so that you don't only practice, but also practice efficiently. Because there can you can practice for four hours and be really, really inefficient about it. And you can practice for one hour and practice really efficiently. And actually you will get more out of the practice session where you practice only one hour, but efficiently. So that is so exciting. So without further ado, just going to check. There's some more people joining us in the chat. I see Robert, the Violin Live, Parsa, Kalin. Um, I see Arm Armarnat, Irandika, people from Belgium, Norway. Wow, amazing. That's so, so great. So um, I can't see how many people are there, actually. Would love to know. But yeah, because before we had... 55 people, I think. Yeah, okay, so the first hack, da, 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 da. <laughs> it's coming everybody. The first hack to practice way, way better. And after you know this hack, we are going to put it into account directly. And that is that before starting to practice your piece, you should know the scale of the piece 
that the skill of the piece. So you should actually know the skill of the piece that you are practicing. And thank you so much for in the chat for letting me know how many people are there. That's awesome. 80 of you. That's amazing on a Wednesday night. So yeah, we are going to practice the skills of our pieces before doing the pieces. So let's do this directly together right now. So first of all, I want you to type in the chat, which piece are you practicing right now? So let me know in the chat, which piece you are practicing and if you can take that piece right away to the computer right now because we are going to analyze your piece right now so right now i'll give you a few minutes get the piece that you are practicing run quickly to your notes i i will get my piece as well and we are going to check for the key signature of the piece <laughs> Kalen is practicing row 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 your boat and rick is practicing secret garden um i am actually i live in germany normally i see nobody else from a german-speaking country i see Feda, beauty and the beast okay nice everybody is now trying to check the piece that they are practicing and now i want you to go to your piece and actually check all the way at the beginning of the piece i want you to check the key signature in the beginning of the piece you will always see first you of course you see the um how do you say this in english it's the vial the the key no what is this called <laughs> let me know in the chat i forgot the english name for this the the all the way at the beginning and over here right next to it you will see the key signature this is the key signature, right? And here I will see one, two, three, four, four sharps, this key signature. I want you to count how many sharps or how many flats. The flats are these Bs, right? I want you to count how much there are in your piece and write it. Thank you so much. It's called the treble clef, everybody, the treble clef. So I want you to count how much there is in the piece that you are currently practicing. And let me know in the chat because the ones that are good, that the ones that are most common that all of you are practicing with, we are going to discuss them right now in the lesson. So let me know how many sharps or how many flats do you have over here? I see that Cloud has one sharp. I see that Marcus has two of which sharps or flats. Diana Thompson has, has one flat. Elizabeth had two flats and two sharps. I see two sharps, two flats. It is very common, right? Normally you see in violin pieces, pieces that are not like super, super, super difficult and impossible to play. You see around at most three uh, or uh, th you see very often three or less sharps or flats. Sometimes you see four, four sharps. It's not very hard on violin either. Um, so now we are going to check in which key signature your piece is. It's so nice to see everybody analyzing their pieces right now, because you know, this is not like the easy part, right? It is always more fun to play. I know that, but I'm so proud of you, everybody for analyzing your piece right now, because this is going to bring your playing to a higher level that you are doing this right now. So now I am going to send you the key signature chart. Wait a second. I need to get the link of the chart. And then you are going to find out in which key signature your piece is written. So I'm going to post it in the chat right now. So make sure to download it in the chat. And otherwise, if you miss this lesson, you can also download it below. Like if you are watching the replay right now, you can find the chart below the video. But right now I will post it over here in the chat so you can get it right now in the chat. And after you've downloaded this, I want you to say which, you you will see uh, two kind. wait, I will show you. Um, I can actually show, show my screen to all of you. So I will actually show this right now. Mm, bro, I'm going to share my screen. 
Da, 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 da. Thank you for your patience, everybody. And almost there. Okay, here it is. Can you see my screen, everybody? You should be a you should be able to see the chart that I've just sent you in the chat. Let me know if you can see it. Okay, so right here you will see the circle of fits, and this is what we will be using to check in which scale the piece is that you are actually practicing right now. Over here you will see the red letters and this actually says in which major scale the piece is written and here the green letters show in which minor scale the piece is written so right now i'm not going to go into it um, if your piece is written in major and minor just very quickly you can check the last note of your piece and normally that note will tell you in which scale it is because normally it ends on the note in which the scale is. So for instance, if the piece is in A minor, the piece will normally end on an A. And if the piece is in C major, the piece will normally end on a C. But right now, we are going to check in which major scale your piece is written. So if you're not sure if your piece is written in major or minor, just check the chart right now and let me know in which scale your piece is written. You need to analyze this right now. And you can find the scale chart over here. I will send another download link because some people say they can't find it. Okay, so I actually see people that are G major key signature. Cloud is having a piece in G major key signature. Then I see Elizabeth who is playing a piece in B flat major. That's indeed correct. Two flats you said before. E major. Traitor, Leroy in B minor, TS in G minor, and those here as well. I just, I just, um, I, I, I will stop screen sharing right now. I, I just actually, though, though I just checked your video and uh, I've just created a reply for you, by the way. Yeah, because in the academy we have video replies, so. Yeah, uh, I see people, G major, A major, D major again. Okay, wow, there's a lot of G major happening over here. So now we know the skill of our piece. Before practicing the piece, we are going to practice the skill because that is the, the basic principle that I want you to learn today. If there's one thing you take away from this lesson, it would be this, that if you want to practice a piece, that you actually practice the skill that belongs to the piece at the same time that you are practicing the piece, especially if the piece is rather challenging for you. So maybe you are practicing a piece in G major. So that would mean you would have to practice the G major skill next to practicing the piece at the same time. And that will actually make it easier to play every note in tune. Because if we know the skill and know where all the fingers go, we will play everything automatically more in tune and it will get so much easier to learn the piece correctly. So now maybe we can go over some skills together so you know what to practice after this lesson. So who doesn't know how to play their own skill? Let me know in the chat. Let me know, I don't know how to play and then write the name of the skill that you are practicing your piece in and then we are going to discuss the skill together and practice it together. And even if it is not a skill that your piece is currently in, it is still super useful to practice skills. Skill practice is always good, right? We all know that. We don't really, really, really want to know it because sometimes we prefer to play pieces, but it is always useful to practice our skills. So now I'm going to check the comments. <laughs> Kalin is saying, Row, 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 your boat is in F sharp, sharp, minor, diminished. <laughs> well, that's that's interesting. <laughs> that's an interesting row, 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 your boat version. Um, <laughs> let's see who else. Okay, so C major. Yes, yeah, that violin is actually an A minor. The and or yeah, the same notes are in the scale of C major, indeed. Actually, if you let check the last note of the piece, set violin, you will see that it is an A. 
Okay, who wants to practice a skill of their piece that they are unfamiliar with? Let me know in the comments which skill you would like to practice together. And let maybe maybe write in the comments like I would like to practice dots. So I I and then write the name of the skill so I know you actually would like to practice that skill and not only say in which um, skill your piece is. Okay. Okay. D major. D major. Okay. Somebody would like to practice the D major skill. Now we are going to try to practice the two octave D major skill to challenge both beginners and more intermediate players. Okay. We are going to practice D major skill together right now. I'm going to show the easy version and the harder version. So we are going to practice both. So get your violin right now, and we are going to start with a D major skill together. Okay. It does it. The lightning isn't as good as before in this room, but I think it's still, you're still able to see it, right, when I play. So the first note of the D major skill, D dua indeed in German, is the open D string. <laughs> So can actually everybody play an open D string? I think we all can, right? So make sure to play your open D string right now. Every second of practice is another second closer to getting good at violin playing. So no excuses not to get your violin right now. Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> I know that there are some people sitting there that are not having their violin right now. So get your violin right now if you feel like that's you and practice with us right now. So let's play D. And does my D actually sound correct for everybody in the chat? Because there have been some sound issues before. Let me know if the D actually sounds correct, yes or no. And meanwhile, get your violin quickly and tune your violin. So you will actually be able to join right now. Um, let me know if the, if the D sounds correct. Okay, yes, oh, Marlene says the D is correct. Great, yeah, perfect, says Clouds. Okay, we can go on with the practice session. Okay, so D, started on the D. Now, what is the next note? That is the first finger on the D string. And actually, if you are in Judas Violin Academy, if you are a student, you should probably know this. So actually, I want you to try to play this completely by heart and think for yourself what the notes of the skill are before I am actually saying it. So now I'm going to play practice D1. Now we are going to place the second finger on the D string. Is this a low or a high second? Think for yourself. High second, indeed. For the D major scale, we play a high second finger on the D string. Let's play it. Third finger is a regular third in the D major scale. Then we are going to play the open A string. And play with me right now, right? Now place your first finger on the A string and play. First finger. And now is the second finger high or low in the D major scale? Hmm, think about it for a second yourself. Indeed, it's high. So let's play the high second. And three. And now we went all the way from D to D, right? So we started on the D and we ended on the D. D, E, F sharp, D, A, B, C sharp, D. Great, that are all the notes of the D major skill. Now we are going to make it a little bit harder. So if you are a beginner, this is the skill you should practice. But if you're a little bit more advanced, you should practice a little bit more. We go on over here. Instead of playing the third finger over here, we are going to use our first finger. So play the D with your first finger. So we are in third position over here. As you see, the first finger is positioned in third position. The first finger is where the third finger normally is. Then we are going to play one, two, three, 
two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Ooh, that's a little bit more difficult, right? Especially for the beginners among us, this is going to be difficult. So D, somebody asked me to call the note names. E, F, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Okay, we did it. Let's go back together. Four, three, two. And by the way, if you are like in beginner level, but you feel like you couldn't use some extra challenge, just play the third position skill as well with us. Two, one, four, three, two, one. Okay, go back to first position. Place your second finger on the A string, high second. One. A, or fourth finger on the D string. Let's make it more difficult for ourselves. I'm going to play fourth finger on the D string. Three. Two. One. D. Hey, welcome, Ipa. Even though you're at work, you're joining us. Okay, so recap of the D major skill. What is really handy is to, you don't have to remember every specific note, but just remember the finger pattern. So on the D string, we play one, two, three, and we actually play a high second finger. And on the A string, also one, two, three, high second finger and regular first and thirds. So do you see the pattern is the same on the D string and the A string? So actually a pretty easy skill, right? And then in first position, in third position, we are also playing the same pattern on both the A string and on the E string. Okay, so, who, so what is the next skill we will practice together? Let me know in the comments, which skill would you like to practice next? So, so why don't I get a shout out? No, no idea, Maria. <laughs> Maybe uh, it is completely random who gets a shout out or not. But if you have a question, let me know and I will definitely uh, give you a shout out and answer your question. Okay, what to do with the E and the G string? Yeah, that's a very good question. So actually in this case, we are practicing the D major skill and below the D, there's actually no D anymore on the instrument because D, C, and then we have B and A and G. And it doesn't go any lower. So that's why we start at the lowest D possible for the scale. And that would be the open D string or the fourth finger on the G. Because the, 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 this is also a D, right? The fourth finger on each string is the same as the open string above. So you can always use the fourth finger instead of the open string. Or the other way around, use the open string instead of the fourth finger because that's easier. But not always more beautiful. So, yeah, uh, and on the E string, we were playing. We were also playing notes of the skill on the E string. Okay, now I'm going to check for comments. So, who, let me know in the comments right now, who actually checks the skill of the piece before practicing the piece? And who doesn't do that? Be honest right now. It's nice to be honest. I'm not going to give you a shout out if you don't, but it's just. Um, Really, really nice to see actually like who is who is planning to do this after this lesson, who didn't do it before. So actually look up the skill of the piece that you are practicing and actually being aware of that before starting your practice session. So let me know in the comments and I'll also see some suggestions for the next skill. There's quite some people that want to practice F major. 
So probably I will I will practice the F major skill next, we thought of you. And I, I'm just going to read some comment. How high can we go on the E string? Well, we can go really, really high on the E string, but it's going to like, um, I, th I, I think the highest, like you can go all the way over here. <laughs> this is how high you can go, but it's really, really hard to make it sound good. I can actually show you that actually I find it really, really hard on my violin, but it is also like, it depends a little bit on some violins. It is even harder because the strings are far away from the fingerboard, like with mine. If the strings are closer, it's actually a little bit easier. So, but I can show. It's not going to sound very good, right? You can, <laughs> to, to get a good sound over there is really, really hard. So, um, but you can do it. You can probably even do this. But it sounds even, that sounds really, really bad. That's actually not in pieces. Okay, I'm going to check the comments right now. Uh, <laughs> I want to learn third oct uh, three octaves of D major. Yeah, we can do that later maybe. Who wants to learn three octave skills? Let me know in the comments. Who is like, that is way too easy what we are doing right now. Let's make it at least three times as hard. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Three octave skills for you. Um, okay. Everybody is, it's hurting. I, I do. Okay. That sound woke up my dog. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. Okay. Yeah. I see some people that actually say, I certainly plan to do it. Angelina, for instance. Um, I never thought of it before. So it's great to see that some of you actually already did the skill thing. And uh, that is amazing. Thumbs up for you. And if you didn't do the skill, the looking up of the skill before, that is amazing that I see so many of you are going to implement this in the future. Now you know it. So, okay. So let's go with three octaves. A lot of people want to do three octaves. Okay, let's just do it, right? <laughs> Actually, um, why not? <laughs> so I think the easiest three octave skill is the G major skill. So we will start with that because I know so many of you never tried a three octave skill before. So then it's probably not as good to start with the D major skill. It's harder than the G major. Um, now I'm going to start it. So get your writing right now and join us for the three octave skill. We are going to start on the open G string. Then we are going to play G1, 2, 3, D, 1 on D string, 2, 3. And make sure that each note is beautifully in tune. The skills are not to are not about the positions, right? It's not to or something like that. It's not like how can I play all the notes fast? It is how can you play every note most beautiful in the most beautiful way possible? So the three octave skill is where you play from G to G to G. So actually you play three octaves of the G behind each other. So G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G. This is the first octave, right? Now we're going to do the second octave. A, let's start it, do it together. Play the A string right now, everybody. First note, first finger on the A. Low, second finger on the A. Now switch to third position. Your first finger will be at the place where you would normally place the third finger and play it. Two, three, four, one, two. And right now, if you are chatting, 
get your Ryan in and join us watching you. Okay. <laughs> um, we are going to play one on the E-string. Everybody can join right now. Don't feel afraid to join, even if you haven't tried it before. Just try it. And you might just learn something. So we are going to do first finger on first finger in third position on the E-string. Try it right now. Two. Now we are going to switch to fifth position. So we are going to move our first string to this spot. So you can actually do it really, really slowly. If you haven't done it before, you can play one, two, and just try to find it. And I see some dogs are getting hurt in this process of practicing a three octave scale. So. <laughs> make make sure your animals are safe now because we are going to go up even higher. Okay, let's play one in fifth position, two, three, four, and now we are going to stretch our fourth finger. We already love our fourth finger so much, right? That why not play it again? And everybody is crying in the chat right now because of the high tones. <laughs> but actually, this is not, not, not even that high yet. It can go way higher, right? We didn't use the full range uh, yet. So <laughs> I see some dogs left the, left the chat now. <laughs> this was happening. OK, let's go and play the fourth finger over here. We are going to play the scale backwards. So now we are going to de-stretch our fourth finger. <laughs> the fourth finger. Four. And now we are going to play three. Two. One. Two. One. Four, three, and play on two, one. Everybody that left, now jump in again because we are going to back to first position. So you can join again. Second thing on the A string, everybody. High second, get your right in. Three, two, one. Oh, we play a low second finger on the A string. One, four, three, high two, one, four, three, two, one, G. And Karen Beersek says, oh, now I understand why the D is actually harder than the G. Yes, because it goes even higher than the G three octave. So definitely even harder. Um, so who wants to practice G major three octave again? What, what, what skill do we want to practice next? Let me know in the chat. And there's even people joining without the violin today. That's awesome. That's a sign that maybe you are destined to play the violin too one day if you are actually visiting this chat uh, instead of one of the other thousands of channels on the internet. Um, let's see, what are we going to practice next? What do you want to learn? What is the next skill? Beginner or hard version? Let me know. Okay, I see some people, quite some skills. Um, F major was quite popular, I remember, before quite some were writing F major. So let's do that together right now. Okay, get your violin. And we are going to place our low second finger on the D string. Okay, low second finger on the D string. Everybody ready? Okay, we are going to play right now. Okay, F, first note. Three on D. A. One, 
Low first finger. Low second finger. Now, let's see. We are going to do beginner version. Third finger. And E string. Low first finger on E. Low first finger on E. Come join us if your violin is still in the case. Get it right now. E. Third finger. Low. Second finger. Low first finger. A. Three. Low two. Now, actually, this is an interesting skill because as you noticed, we always use the low first finger instead of the high one, right? And that is quite interesting. And some teachers actually call this the half position because we are not placing our first finger on the first finger we're sick or where we would normally place the first finger, but half a tone below that. So sometimes this is called the half position. So now you know, if ever anybody ever says, play something in the half position, you can always play this skill and look like you really know what you're doing. So, okay, let's see what the chat is saying. Which skills should we practice next? Maybe you have analyzed your piece and you don't know which skill to play it in. I see some flat keys. Okay, let's try B. B flat major. That is what some people wanted to practice. So let's get our right in. Low second finger on the G string. And this is where we start, right? So get your right in. Low second finger. Everybody ready? Okay, I see it's it's pretty quiet in the chest, so people do actually take their violin. <laughs> That's great. Okay, low second finger and go. Third finger. I'm going to challenge you. Use your fourth finger right now. If this is too hard, you can use the open string, but try the fourth finger. Four. Now, place your low first finger on the D string. Wow, that's a big stretch, right? All the way from four to low first finger. Low second finger. Third finger. Fourth finger. Low first finger on A. Low second finger. Third. Low fourth finger that goes directly above the third finger, the low fourth finger. First finger, low. Two. Three. Low four. Okay, so did you notice something about this skill? In which position is it? Let me know in the chat. We've just been talking about this. So maybe you know something special about the skill. I'm going to check the chat. And meanwhile, I'm going to take my time to shamelessly put an advertisement for tomorrow. Actually, this is not an advertisement, right? This is fun. So tomorrow we are going to have another live practice session. Same time. Eight o'clock at night again, like in my time, it's eight o'clock at night. No idea what it was in your time. So it will be 40 minutes before this time in your time zone. So that would be eight o'clock in Europe, but in the States, that's definitely earlier. Every day we will have a session at the same time. You can find the link below this video to check in which time it will be in your and the place where you live in the calendar below. You can find it. So let's see. Yes, indeed, that was the half position. Indeed, the B flat major scale is also played in the half position. So it is also always with a low first finger. So yeah. Okay. Um, 
that was our practice session for today, I guess. But we will have a practice session every day of the week. So not only tomorrow, but also on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, each day on the same time. So let me know in the comments right now if you're going to join for another session. By the way, I'm also proud of all of you that showed up and practiced the skills today. That's a great time because sometimes we feel like, oh, it doesn't really matter. You can practice forever and not improve. But if you do this consistently on a consistent basis and you practice skills every day for a few minutes or for half an hour, like we just did this lesson, you will really, really see big a big difference after a few few years so keep up the good practice and if you are motivated to keep up with this good start of the week or of the end of the week i guess definitely come and join us again and practice again with us because we will do some really fundamental amazing practice sessions that will help really just anybody actually because they we are practicing such fundamental principles that it doesn't really matter which level you are and you will benefit from practicing skills no matter if you are uh, just starting out or practicing for a while already so who is going to join us tomorrow again let me know in the chat i'm going to see who i will be able to see again or maybe this weekend i'm going to see i like this time during the week so elizabeth is maybe coming again <laughs> not sure so yes, Ali is going to come again. Ripolo, Cloud is joining again tomorrow. Again, Traitor. Wow, that's amazing. So many of you. GK, Amarnet. Wow, <laughs> that's awesome. Really look forward to see all of you again. And uh, yeah, tomorrow we are going to reveal the second practice secret. <laughs> so uh, definitely... If you want to know the second secret, definitely be there tomorrow. So you will be the first one to know. So I see Marlene is joining us again. Shaitanya. That's a difficult name for me. Dipyoyoti. Hope that was correct. Maria will join. It's a bit late for neighbors, but still you are there. That's amazing that you come anyway to check out um, and to learn anyway and all the principles that you can learn. So if you actually don't want to be loud for your neighbors, you can also practice your skills doing pizzicato, which means it's not very loud and you can still practice your skills and your intonation. So I see so many of you are going to come again. Josh is joining Karin, Karan Beer Amarat. Marcus will join on Friday. Tia will join again. That's awesome. I'm so excited. So invite all your friends. If you know any other violin players that might be interested in joining this, make sure to invite them for the sessions today. Maybe you know some violin groups where you could share this in or something like that. Would be awesome to get to know a lot of people and to bring people together to practice in the evenings together or in the afternoons, no matter what time it is right now in your time zone. So thank you everybody for joining and see you tomorrow for the next practice secret and practice session. Goodbye everybody.